talk to you about catastrophic grief. That may be a term you're not familiar with, but what I mean by catastrophic grief is when someone has lost someone in a very dramatic way, maybe a violent way, it could mean that you've lost multiple people at the same time. It's a little bit different grief than just the normal grief. You know, my dad passed away when he was 86 and he had lived a very long and full life and even though he died of cancer and there was a lot of pain and sadness, it was in some ways okay for me when he passed away. I, I grieved, I mourned, but it was clean. There weren't any edges to it. There wasn't anything complicated about my dad's death. But when my son, when my 27-year-old son took his life, that was a completely different experience. And some of you know what I'm talking about because you've lost someone through suicide or murder, or you've lost multiple family members in, in a way that's very tragic and very difficult to deal with. And that's what I mean when I say catastrophic grief and catastrophic loss because this kind of loss has layers. It's not simple, it's not clean, it's got edges to it. It's got things like guilt and remorse and recrimination and self-doubt. It has these layers, it has anger. And I wanna to talk to you about how to manage that, how to get through that, what, how it's been for me. What I didn't realize about catastrophic loss is that it's like I envision it as, as a room with a very big door. And if I go through that door, I'm gonna go into the room of catastrophic grief. See, we lost our son and we were instantly mourning. But grieving is something you have to decide to do. You have to allow yourself to do. And so it's as though I walked up to this room where there was this big door and I opened this door and I went into this room of catastrophic loss and catastrophic grief. And in that room, what I wasn't expecting was that there were a whole bunch of other little doors. There were these series of smaller doors. And I was curious and I sort of walked up to those doors in my mind and I would open that door and when I would do it, I would realize, oh my gosh, there's a whole nother grief that I didn't even think about. That's, that's a grief from my childhood. And I would slam that door in my mind. And I would kind of walk through this room and I would see another door and if I pulled open that door, and I would realize, oh no, that's, a, that's an ungrieved loss from, from early in my marriage. And I would shut that door because I'm like, I'm not thinking about that right now. I can only think about my, the loss of my son. What I'm trying to say is, is that catastrophic grief opens the door, if you will, to other ungrieved, unmourned, or, or incompletely grieved or mourned losses in our lives. I didn't expect that. I thought it was enough that I just had to deal with the loss of my son. I didn't know what to do with the fact that by going into this room of catastrophic grief, that I was also gonna encounter all these other places of grief. And before long, I've got grief more than I know what to do with. Because it's sort of like those cartoons, you know, in a cartoon, if you walk up to an overstuffed closet, and if you open the overstuffed closet, and then you try to slam the door real fast, stuff still falls out on the floor. Well, that's what it felt like it happened. I would open these doors, and stuff fell out onto the floor of catastrophic grief. And if you're feeling that, if you're experiencing that, I want you to know it's really a very normal, it's a very expected thing that happens when you've lost someone to murder or to suicide, or you've lost multiple family members. And it's okay, as painful as it is. The temptation in any kind of grief is to just push it under the carpet, to push it back into that closet, to walk out of that room where catastrophic grief is happening to you. That's the temptation because it is so painful. It is so painful to really let yourself feel and mourn and grieve over the loss of someone that was so dear to you. But I would urge you not to walk away, not to go out of that room, not to void those other doors, not to feel like if I open that door, here's what I think happens. I think that we become very frightened of our intense emotions, of our intense grief. And we have this fear that if we really let ourselves feel, that we'll, we'll never be able to recover that the pain and the emotion will be so strong and it will wipe us out and there'll be no, we won't, we'll never recover. We'll go crazy. We'll, we'll be broken forever. And so many people as I talk to say, I'm not gonna let myself go there because I don't know what will happen to me if I let myself feel that. And I really wanna encourage you to let yourself feel it. As difficult as it is, you're not gonna go crazy. You will recover. You will get through. You will thrive. But to, to do that, you have to let, to let yourself feel, to allow yourself to experience that. 
don't do it alone. Do not, do not go through catastrophic grief by yourself. This is the time when you must bring other people in. You have to let other people in to share that grief and that loss with you. It's the only way to heal well. I don't even know if there is such a thing. It feels so silly to say something like grieve well or, or heal well. I guess what I mean is so that you build the resilience that you can thrive again. Right now you're probably just trying to survive. I, I get that. I'm still there myself. But I believe that as I go through catastrophic grief, feel the feelings, let myself mourn, not be afraid of overwhelming emotions, that I will not only survive, but I will thrive again. And that's my prayer for you.